Hello and welcome to today's episode of the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the top stories from around the world. Let's take a look at today's headlines. US and China emphasize cooperation during summit. European Union announces sanctions against Belarus. Bus drivers in Indian state launch major strike. And indigenous clans evict Canadian pipeline from unseated territory. In our first story, a virtual summit between Chinese President Xi Jinping and his US counterpart Joe Biden was held on November 15. This was the first formal meeting between two leaders since Biden took office in January. Xi stated that both China and US needed to increase communication and cooperation. He added that China and the US should respect each other, coexist in peace and pursue win-win cooperation. Biden stated that it was the responsibility of both leaders to ensure that the competition between the two countries did not veer into conflict. Both sides stressed the need to work together on global issues like climate change. China and the US also unveiled a surprise pact at the United Nations COP26 conference last week. According to Chinese news organization Global Times, Biden said that he was not seeking a new Cold War. Recent U.S. foreign policy steps, including the AUK-US military pact, have been criticized as unnecessary and provocative steps towards China. China had also called the pact extremely irresponsible and one that could affect stability in the Indo-Pacific. It has previously also rebuked U.S. accusations related to unfair trade practices and the situation in Hong Kong and Xinjiang. Another major issue discussed during the summit was Taiwan. She said that China would strive for the prospect of peaceful reunification with utmost sincerity and efforts. However, she added that if separatist forces provoked China, it would be compelled to take resolute action. According to the Xinhua agency, he also blamed forces on the US side for using Taiwan to interfere in China. Meanwhile, Biden reiterated the formal U.S. One China policy, adding that the U.S. strongly opposed unilateral efforts to change the status quo or undermine peace and stability across the Taiwan Strait. While no concrete agreement was signed, the summit is being viewed as a step to increase trust in bilateral ties. In our next story, the European Union has agreed to expand sanctions on Belarus as migrants remain stranded at its borders with Poland. Around 3 to 4,000 people are believed to be inside a 3-kilometer wide exclusion zone enforced by Poland. Migrants and asylum seekers have come from countries including Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan, Yemen, the Democratic Republic of Congo and Sudan. After arriving at the Poland-Belarus border, they received text messages stating that the Polish border was sealed, that Belarus authorities had lied and to go back to Minsk. People are stuck under freezing temperatures without access to food and water. Migrants have stated that they have been beaten by border guards and several cases of hypothermia have been reported. At least 10 people are reported to have died in the area since August. Poland the US and the EU have placed the blame entirely on Belarus, citing months-long tensions. This obscures the question of why so many people have been forced to seek asylum in Europe. A look at their countries of origin shows that people are fleeing countries destroyed by Western NATO-led interventions. As the crisis has unfolded on the border, the right-wing Polish government has made xenophobic and Islamophobic remarks against refugees. Latvia has also deployed 3,000 troops for an unannounced military drill in it near its border with Belarus. The European Union announced on Monday that sanctions will be imposed on individuals and entities for facilitating the illegal border crossings into Europe. For our next story, we go to India, where bus drivers in the state of Maharashtra have been on strike for 20 days. The Maharashtra State Transport Corporation or MSRTC employs 96,000 people operating 17,000 buses. Bus operations remain shut across all 250 stations in the state on Monday. 24 workers unions launched an indefinite strike on October 28th 
to demand that MSRTC merge with the state government. This will make workers government employees and give them access to better salaries and benefits. MSRTC workers were hit hard by the COVID-19 pandemic. According to a testimony published by The Wire, a driver was earning a monthly income equivalent of only 187 US dollars. Meager pay combined with crushing debt have reportedly pushed 37 employees to commit suicide since March 2020. Following a high court order, the government issued a resolution to form a three-member committee to address the demands of the employees. Transport Minister Anil Parab has so far agreed to a few issues, including dearness allowance, which is an additional amount added to the salary based on inflation. The amount was increased from 12 to 17 percent. Meanwhile, state government employees received 28 percent. Employees have remained on strike despite orders by a labor court and a high court to end the action. Around 1,500 have been suspended for taking part in the protest action. And finally, we go to Canada, where indigenous clans are enforcing an eviction notice against TC Energy, the company's 670-kilometer-long coastal gas link pipeline will cut through northern British Columbia. TC Energy signed agreements with 20 indigenous band councils along the project route. However, hereditary chiefs of all five clans in Wet'suwet'en territory argued that these agreements could not be imposed without the consent of their traditional government. Moreover, a spokesperson said that the chiefs had never ceded, surrendered or lost in war the title to their territory. They issued an eviction order against Coastal Gas Link, or CGL, on January 4, 2020 previously. However, CGL was able to obtain a Supreme Court injunction against the eviction. On November 14, members of the Gerimten clan enforced the eviction order. This followed 50 days after a protest camp was set up which stopped CGL plans to drill under the Morris River. CGL workers were given eight hours to peacefully leave the territory. Moreover, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police was told to maintain a 30-kilometer distance. However, there was no movement despite CGL seeking a two-hour extension. Moreover, three RCMP officers entered the territory. Starting Sunday night, the Girimton clan shut down the Morris River Forest Service Road. Meanwhile, CGL has not confirmed how many of its workers are still on site. And that's all for today. For more such stories, visit our website at www.peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.